This grid math seems abstract with a lot of symbols, while application seems more concrete and easier to understand. So in this video, I'll show you five surprising applications of this grid math, making you think, oh, that's this grid math. Nice. Questioning on why should we learn this grid math? Let's review what happened in 2024. OpenAI has unveiled Sora, and DeepMind has released AlphaFold 3. Amid these rapid advancements, foundational courses like this grid math continue to hold a pivotal place at top-tier universities like CMU, MIT, and Stanford introduced this grid math in the freshman year. According to Professor Sipser, the computer technology changes so fast, while the foundations of this grid math has lasting values. Let's dive into the How first large application, language natural language work? processing. In Andrei Kapathy's GPT tokenizer course, he said, We want to take strings and feed them into language models. For that, we need to somehow tokenize strings into some integers. The regular expression from this grid math plays an important role in text processing of tokenization. For example, when you are using OpenAI's API, you will be charged in light of the token's amount. The prompt that USA poster print cost $12.40 can be recognized by tokens with different colors. To do that, we can use regular expression to identify them. There you go! Moving from digital test to real-world action, discrete math is one of the backbone of robotics. Ever heard of sex theory? For example, this is a simple set intersection that helps our robotic friends here navigate through cluttered environments safely. Here's the definition of the free space configuration of robots. C is the set of any configurations, for example, arbitrary x vector and y vector. RQ means the space that the robot creates when I use the configuration Q. WO denotes world obstacles. That means I can change the configuration Q in a way I like it as long as not hitting any obstacles. But if I hit something, the intersection of my robot space and the world obstacles are no longer an empty set. The collision occurs. Next comes one of my favorite applications of this grid math, the compilers. It's Eric Coder's Unsung Hero, or should I say Nightmare? If you are a C++ programmer and encounter a lot of compiler errors, well, are you curious about how the following Python code is determined valid or invalid? These models of software engineering use context-free grammars from discrete math to analyze and structure your code. Let me show you how the CFG can do that. A CFG, simply put, is a set of rules. Typically, we start with a so expression. Then, starting with this initial expression, we apply the rules. First, we use the second rule, then expression becomes expression operator expression. Now apply the third rule to add parentheses. Then apply the second rule, first, fourth, first rule again, fifth rule, and finally the first rule to complete the whole expression. Now look at this syntax. Isn't just the one I showed you before? The context-free grammar ensures that the code you write is translated correctly into computer language. Compilers are amazing, right? But the magic of this screen math doesn't stop here. It also underpins the world of cryptocurrencies. One critical aspect is the underlying science of cryptography and graph theory. We'll see the Byzantine broadcast, which keeps cryptocurrencies robust against fraud. Here's the breakdown. Imagine there are few divisions of Byzantine army are camped outside an enemy city. Each division commanded by its own general. The generals can communicate with one another only by messenger. After observing the enemy, they must decide upon a common plan of action. However, some of the generals may be traitors, trying to prevent the royal generals from reaching the agreement. If there are traitors inside, the attack will be failed. So, to assure to win the battle, 
they need to find a way to confirm everyone is loyal. This is an analogy in cryptocurrencies. We start with nodes in a network, which each node represents a participant in the cryptocurrency system. And nodes are one of the interesting topics in discrete math. We also need to confirm the other nodes are honest. Here's how to do that. For every two nodes, they will receive an input from bits to start. The nodes then run some protocol. At the end of the protocol, every honest node outputs a bit. And if our sender is honest and transmits a bit one, then all honest nodes should output one as well, ensuring the transaction's authenticity. As we move from digital currencies to the core of modern computing, we encounter another fascinating application of discrete math. Have you ever wondered what makes modern computers so powerful? Or wondering sometimes why it frees? For example, I want to subscribe for my channel and I click the button, somehow the program doesn't respond. All these questions can be unveiled after you learn computability theory and Turing machine. A Turing machine introduced by Alan Turing in 1936 from his thesis is a theoretical model that defines the basic principles of computation. The idea is simple but powerful. Imagine you have an infinite tape divided into cells, each holding a symbol. The machine has read and write head moving across the tape, following with a set of rules to manipulate the symbols. This is an intuitive example on rearranging the input as AAA BBB. Just give you a quick glance what does a Turing machine look like and what does a set of rules look like. There you have it, five applications using this math, showing that this math not just about numbers, but rather making sense of our world. If you want to know more about this math, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you around.